pivot tables is something you've probably learned, right? Let's talk a little bit about what we can do with pivot tables as far. We took birth data and said in the US, when are people born? Pivot by month of birth and date of birth and count the number of children who are born on a particular date. This is using Excel's conditional formatting, roughly. And you'll find a few things. Firstly, you'll find that there are a large number of children who seem to be born in July, August, September, particularly September. You'll find that there are very few births during the Christmas holidays, very few births during the Thanksgiving holidays, very few births during the New Year holidays. The US Independence Day holiday is July the 4th and July the 5th and very few births during the Independence Day holidays as well. Now this half reads like a holiday calendar, not a birth calendar. That is because uh, most of these hospitals may be closed on those days. Good point. And therefore delivering children on those days is a little trickier and because a large proportion of births in those times were C-section births, people could move the dates around a little bit. Let's have the children when there are people in the hospital when it's not a ho hospital holiday. Very good point. But do you notice the stripe on the 13th of every month? Very few children are born on the 13th. Yeah. Because it's considered to be a unlucky number. Yeah. And so it's not just whether the hospitals are available. It's whether the child is born on an unlucky day. But there are some lucky dates as well. Feb 14th. Well, so we can see that February yeah. is almost completely blank except February 14th, which is very dark in nature. Yeah. Valentine's Day. So let our children be born on Valentine's Day. Good day. <laughs> let our kids not be born on April Fool's Day. Right? Yes, not that's why it's completely bad. So if the US can be this superstitious, what's India like? That's the pattern in India. There's no one in uh, after August. Which is bizarre. But that's a mystery that will vanish when I tell you that this is the same data that I used a few slides ago for schools. This is basically the birth dates of uh, based on school admission records. Now think about it. If the schools and these are for schools which typically open mid-June and sometimes in end July. So that's the time range for the school opening date. If a child is born on 1st of August and the school opens, has a cutoff date that they should be six years old on 31st July. Our parents will say, oh look, just one day earlier and my child could get admission this year itself. Now the child will have to wait for the next year. Not a great situation. So what do they do? Fudge dates a little bit. Move those dates up to May, June, July so that the children get admission. Now, can I just conclude that they're moving their dates just because of the fact that there are very few births in August? Well, actually, I have another additional data point. You notice these dark stripes on the 5th, the 10th, the 15th, the 20th, the 25th, especially in April, May, June, July. When people cook up numbers, they cook up round numbers. <laughs> and it's a whole lot easier to say 15th of June, which incidentally is my father's official birthday, though he was actually born on December the 21st. So much easier to say 15th of June than let's say the 17th of June. And yeah, these are the actual uh, reported birthdays. And this has an impact because if you overlay the marks of children born on these days, you'll see that the children who say they are born, especially in the mid-year, in uh, on the 5th, the 10th, the 15th, the 20th, etc., they tend to score lower. Ignore these dark red spots on Feb 30th and 31st. These are dates that are non-existent. That's why they're dark red. Uh, but out here, we find that the children who say they are born on the 5th, 10th, etc., but mostly these are cooked up dates, it tends to lower their average because what we're doing is taking a younger child and pushing them up in a grade with older children and that makes it much harder for them. In fact, the 1st of June is the worst in terms of performance. It's also the most common birthday in India, at least according to school records. Jan the 1st <laughs> is the second most common. Jan the 1st is common because the official government rule is that if the child or the parent does not know the exact date of birth, pick the year and say Jan the 1st. June the 1st is an urban phenomenon. 
mostly to get the children in uh, into school early and you can see what's happening here now, all we're doing here is putting a pivot table and exploring the data and this can be really powerful in so many ways what i did here was particularly created a pivot table using a calendar of month versus date and this can be applied in so many other areas let me tell you about a restaurant this restaurant said uh, we have point of sale data what can you tell us about it? so we said okay let's look at analyze one particular restaurant in their, their chain and they have four of these point of sale terminals this terminal is in the front and this is the counter next to it and these two are at the back and one of the things you'll notice that is interesting here is that by the way this shows the sales where green is high sales and red is low sales and it shows the sales on a calendar from the 1st of december 2011 all the way up to the 13th of june 2012 from monday to sunday and by uh, organized by week and you'll find that every wednesday sales is dipping every wednesday almost as if to compensate every wednesday the sales is increasing in the counter right next to it but not as much as it is dipping here so overall there is a net reduction in sales every wednesday we didn't know why so we took it to our client said we also don't know why they took it to the store manager he also said i don't know why and they investigated for 3 weeks after 3 weeks the sales manager came back very sheepishly he said but one of our supervisors he lets the person who take who runs this counter take half day off every wednesday for religious reasons now this counter therefore for half a day does not have anybody and all the people are shifting over to this nearby counter normally this would have been fine but this is a restaurant in an area where there are lots of restaurants so once the queue becomes big people just go on to other restaurants when they see a big queue they just walk off So net net for seven months we've been losing sales without us even knowing about it, and the supervisor was very happy because there was a large queue on this counter, so he thought things were fine. Sometimes data can tell things to people that even when they are looking at it face to face, day in and day out, they don't necessarily make sense out of it. Another classic case of that is okay. I'm not going into a digression. these were examples of simply using pivot tables heat maps colors to see something that is not obvious